You are live. Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day, wherever you are. So what are we going to talk about on Leading Ladies, Leading Legacies today? Well, we're all confined. We're sequestered. We're in lockdown. So most of us are thinking about work and how we're going to continue on in the best way or find new or whatever. So we're going to talk a lot about marketing and speaking and how you maybe get out there and get your message known more so because this leading lady that we have today, oh, her background is never ending. We're going to discuss that. I am Joy Ruffin, signature style specialist, professional speaker, and the creator of Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. Now, every week I bring to you a leading lady, a lady who has gone through some type of transformation, internal and external, and then that has brought her to her discovery of what she's doing now. And so we're going to discuss that with our leading lady tonight. And the leading ladies that are here and those that I work with hire me to amp up their wow factor because they're just tired of styling themselves and they want to erase that struggle and spending way too much money. We're going to talk a lot about that later towards the end. But for now, let's say hello to our guest tonight. I'm going to bring her up. Katrina, hello, 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 and welcome hello. to have you here. Hi, Joy. Thanks for having me. Oh. I'd love to be a leading lady like yourself, so <laughs> very honored, very honored. Oh God. Listen, you are no more honored than I am because to me, every woman is her own leading lady and beautiful in more ways than she knows. And you are fascinating to me because of all the work that you do. Your background is just never ending. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and how you got started. <laughs> well, I've always been in some kind of sales and marketing job, period. I mean, I think I, my mom wouldn't, I don't know how it happened because she's like the complete opposite of me. So is my dad as far as being a sales oriented, marketing focused. Um, but I just love it. I've always gravitated towards jobs where I could be in the mix and talking to clients like that. Um, when I first found my love of wanting to be an entrepreneur, well, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since college, but I wasn't mm -hmm. sure what that looked like. I wasn't sure what kind of business. Um, I knew it would just kind of come to me, right? So then I, I got into this advertising job for selling newspaper advertising like 20 years ago uh, mm -hmm. in the Sacramento area. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I found the love of the small business owner and, because I would knock on doors. I'd literally go around town, driving around town, knocking on doors, asking people if they wanted to run an ad. And it's uh, it really was a very challenging job, but I was good at it. It's a numbers game. You know, you got to hit so many doors in order to find the people that are willing to talk to you, much yeah. less buy from you. Uh -huh. And uh, But then I would also see them going out of business left and right because they were throwing money at random advertising opportunities and they didn't really know how to take those leads and turn them into recurring business or things like that. So I, I learned that it wasn't just about getting them exposure and people coming in that they didn't really know how to keep the business. So that's when I yeah. started my own business and exactly. really was helping them do all the things that it requires to keep a consistent money making business model. Well, that's fascinating. And you know what? More so is the way that you express that because you said that you always kind of knew and you started off, you wanted to be an entrepreneurial person. Yes. You know, one thinks that initially because most people don't even know what the word means. So <laughs> at some point in time, you decided that you wanted to be your own agent and you wanted to learn everything that you needed to know so that you could begin what you wanted to do for you and then help others to do the same. Would there be some truth in that? Oh yeah, totally. And it was scary. It was, I mean, uh, my advertising job, you know, it was kind of base plus commission is how I was paid. And yeah. I was always top in sales because I did really well. I was very consultative, mind you, with the clients. And uh, I remember getting swayed away or t uh, attempting to get swayed away to the radio stations to sell radio advertising. And I would say to them, 
no, you're commission only. I could never do that. That's just too scary. <laughs> right. And, and then like a couple of years later, here I am my own business. Um, hello, it's commission only <laughs> in your own business. <laughs> yeah. It, it's scary. I think scarier. That, yeah, it is scary for a lot of people. And especially now with this pandemic that we're all involved with, there are so many people who are wanting to start and do their own. And yet they are used to a paycheck for moons, many moons ago. I was one of them before I even started this, and yet I understood the dynamics behind it. But tell us, how did you get into the marketing and making sure that the people that you're working with, because first I should ask you, because I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. The message is important, right? The message is everything. So how do you help the people who are getting into their own business to learn and to get to the message that fits them best and how to market it. Yeah, it, back then it wasn't the message because uh, it was in a way like you had to have the attention getting headline, uh -huh. the, the right bullet points and the ad or the flyer or the whatever piece, and then the right call to action that would make people want to go, okay, I'm ready to buy, yeah. here's my credit card. So in that regard, yes, you need to have those right words, whether it's in your, 30 second com commercial at a networking event, or whether it's uh, on a web page where you're trying to get someone to either buy something or opt in for a free thing, you'd think that, you know, hey, I'm giving you this free thing that everybody would just go get it. But no, like sometimes our conversion rates on those free gift opt in pages are literally 20%. You think, well, why aren't they going to get my free thing? Well, you haven't sold them enough. You haven't made a compelling argument enough why they need that free thing. And, that email address is very valuable to a lot of people. So yes, the message is important and there's so many different ways that you use it. And a lot of people just don't think about all those different ways that it has to be given. Great explanation. And the way that you explained how important words are and you taught me something about that. Let me tell you, and I am a wordsmith in my fashion. And yet sometimes you just get carried away with stuff and you, let things slip by and you don't get enough thought, but how you word things and how you present to your target audience, that's major, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and because you had written like, uh, and she helps people, she'll kick you to the curb or something like that. And she'll do it with love. And I'm like, well, wait, I won't kick them to the curb. I kick them in their butt to get more clients. There is a very specific, yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is why when you have someone that wants to share your information, or if you are a speaker, you have to give people the little blurbs pre-written ready to go, because everybody's busy, everybody's busy. They need to just copy paste and post. It, it's a copy paste post world. <laughs> and yeah, if, you're not, it if you're not hand fish, you know, hand delivering that stuff that you want people to use, uh, then they're most likely going to do it wrong. Uh, because not that they don't think or look or aren't smart, but we're just too busy. Yeah. And that key word busy, that's a word that's just buzzing everywhere. And sometimes I wonder, Katrina, we're all confined. We're home and we're working probably more than we did originally. And yet we're super, super busy. So I suppose <laughs> there's a lot in that word busy, but we'll leave that. You mentioned a word earlier that I want to piggyback on. And you mentioned networking. How important have you found that to be for you now and when you started out? Well, networking and follow up are the, the only reason that I'm here doing what I'm doing. Ah. It is how I started, it's how I continue to market my business. Now, I happen to love networking, so I'm a very much an extrovert. Uh, so I know that's not everybody. It might no. be only half of your audience, right? Yes. And so if you're not an extrovert, then what do you do about that? But there, there are ways to make it more comfortable for you. And not everybody needs to network. And now we're networking online too. So there's networking online, there's networking in person, and now there's networking virtually. So I just wrote a chapter about it in my next book. So about networking in <laughs> three different ways. Yeah. I like the way where the way and where you're taking us because I was going to get to the books, but you mentioned something about you don't have to network. And I agree with that. And you mentioned the extrovert and the introvert. And I think there's a big discrepancy in and the meaning and understanding of what that means is misconstrued a lot because you can be very successful in this online business being an introvert. You don't you have can. to be an extrovert. 
Mm -mm. And I think no. people need to know that. Can you speak to that a wee bit more? Yeah, well, there's like the, there's like 20 different marketing strategies that I teach in a typical workshop or in my coaching programs. Uh -huh. I would say uh, at least five or six of them are very much ones that extroverts gravitate to and introverts shy from, like video, speaking, networking, the, the top three, right? And frankly, those are the top three most important ones that I think if you can embrace it and just do it in your way, you will get more clients. You, uh, If you avoid speaking, networking, and video altogether, you're gonna have a long road of, mar mm -hmm. of like online marketing and busy work in order to find the number of clients you can. If you could just show up once in a while, uh, you know, live, and people can get to know you. I like the three, the big three. Now let's speak to speaking because I know that you're involved in a lot of speaking organizations, companies, yeah. networking. So tell us a little bit more about that. So speaking, I always say is the number one fastest path to cash. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> especially if, if you are the speaker presenting. Now this is more of an interview style, right? But it's still speaking. Uh, myself on a Facebook Live is still speaking. It's just I I created my own speaking gig if I hosted my own Facebook Live. Me being a guest on your show is like a guest speaking opportunity. Uh -huh. uh, In-person events, uh, you can host your own event or conference or workshop or seminar, one hour to four days or whatever it is, and then you're the host. That's still a speaking gig. You can be a presenter at an event in person or virtually, frankly, on somebody else's event where they have other speakers and you could do a 30 minute or a one hour talk or whatever there and that's a guest speaking spot. I'll, those are the things that are going to bring you more business faster because people get to know you, like you and trust you faster when they can hear you, see you, speak you, touch you, right? Um, and so, you want to try to figure out how to incorporate this at some level in your business. I don't care if you're selling Mary Kay or flooring in your store, like household flooring, right? It doesn't uh, matter. It, it, um, <laughs> the way that you express that, it's so on point and you have to do, it's great if you can do all three, but at least two out of the three. And even if you're the shy introvert withdrawn, you can do videos because you're doing it from your home and it's going out into the stratosphere. How yeah. important, if you had to rate them in the order of speaking, video and networking, how would you rate them, uh, Katrina? Um, well, speaking and video, um, uh, video is speaking. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand. And, and frankly, by doing video, if uh, you are the introvert or whatever, you can sit on your computer and record and record and re-record and re-record wow. and re-record until you think it's perfect. And then you can put it out if you want to. Whereas if, so that might be a choice for somebody who has a problem watching themselves or isn't good with wow. getting the scripting down and the way they want to present themselves or doesn't like looking at themselves in video. I look at myself in video all day long, right? But, <laughs> and I don't necessarily like looking at myself in video either. It's like, oh, my hair is out of place. I'm like, Ugh. and why is my shirt like this? And like, what, you know, so I get it. But I don't care. I don't. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. You either gonna like me, don't like me. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of people out there that are gonna like me. Okay, and I just have to get in front of more people. <clears throat> that goes back to not everyone's going to like you, and that's probably one of the biggest hurdles <laughs> that one has to get over. And you, not everyone is meant to like you. They might have respect or regard for you, but you want to find your tribe. You want right. to find your circle your right. people to work with you. So I get that. And yet I also realize what you said about working, doing the video, you know, like the way you look, the hair, the lipstick, the makeup, the stuff, the everything. It's but your you, style. <laughs> my new word for things like that. you got to get over that. And so yeah. one does. Now you do so much and we could be here for days, but we only have 30 minutes. So tell <laughs> us about your book. I love the title. You keep changing topics on me, and I want to talk for like 20 more minutes on each one. I know, I know. You're killing you know, me, Joy. <laughs> 30 minutes goes very, very quickly, my love. It goes boom, it's gone. But you can stick with that if you want to for a wee bit longer. I'm not going to rush you, but I do want to cover as many bases as I can with it's fine. the phenomenal I, work that you're doing. I laugh because and now I have short-term memory, and I totally forgot what we were talking about. Okay, so the books. <laughs> I'm 50 years old and this is no joke. Like things just go, whoop. if it's not written down, it is like next. Okay, what books? Okay, books. 
I, so. I think, listen, Katrina, <laughs> in a way, let me just share this with you. That's a gift. That's a wow. blessing because you can roll and ride with whatever's put in front of you. You don't yeah. have to get stuck in a, in a structure or routine that doesn't fit. So I get it and I don't have an issue with it at all. So let's just continue to roll. I really <laughs> wanted to speak to all of the books. I think you've written how many books? Yes, well, I have uh, 10 books total so far. Um, yes. One is publishing in two weeks. So we're doing a book launch on October 6th with the next book and um, so I do one every year myself, which is the compilation book, Jumpstart Your Blank, where yeah. I do a bunch of authors. So there's a bunch of authors that write chapters. And then, so we do that every year. Uh, I have the Love Yourself Successful book and the Jumpstart Your New Business Now book. And then I have a couple other compilations. And then I'm in a bunch of other people's compilation books. So I, I don't say no very often. If it's easy to write a chapter in a book, I think I have two other books coming out in the beginning of next year. Yeah. Let's stay with just the two, because I think the titles are commanding and the, the subject and everything, Jumpstart and Love Yourself Successfully. Yes. Tell us a wee bit about how you came to write those books, <laughs> what those books, because Love Yourself Successfully is a title that just grew yes. and everyone wants to know more. And I also like another one that you have something, Don't Settle. But let's stick with those two. Share with us a little yes. bit about those books to entice us to want to get out there and buy those books. Sure. Wow. Well, and you can find them on Amazon or my yeah. website, which is getting an overhaul right now. So you may or may not be able to find that. Um, oh, anyways, okay. right. uh, the, but the lovers is so, just to back up a quick bit, is uh, I did a chapter in three different compilation books, somebody else's, before I wrote my first book because. Okay. I was focused on revenue generating activities. I was focused on building the money making business model and getting clients. So I couldn't spend the time on a full book because I knew you don't make money at the book. You don't make money at the book. The book is a great business card. And it, once people read my books, then they're like, they either like me even more and they might want to work with me or they they get inspired or whatever. So Katrina, yes, I think you're the first person and I've interviewed quite a few who's mentioned that fact that you oh. don't make a lot of money. You don't, you don't make money from the books. You make the money from what the book allows you to sell in the back there end. You go. Okay. Very good so book. I waited to do the full book because it wasn't, I needed revenue, right? And when you are building a business, you need monthly recurring revenue. You don't have time to go hibernate yourself for six months to write this book. It was not a good, it was not a good revenue. It was a non revenue generating activity. So, mm -hmm. I did that and then finally I decided, okay, I'm gonna write my own book. And that was in 2009 when I said it and I thought, okay, I wanna write a book, so, but I don't know what the content is yet. Something around love and money and blah, 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 right? And I thought, okay, well, I'll just create a live event then because in planning for the live event, I will come up with the content. It'll download, I'll come up with the signature process I'm gonna teach in the event, and boom, that'll be the content for the book. And uh -huh. that didn't happen. So <laughs> the event happened and the content for the event happened, but it's still, I knew it wasn't intuitive. I knew that was not the book content. Uh -huh. So I had to keep chugging away and thinking and waiting and for downloads. I'm not one to like sit and force the writing. I just kind of waited and then 2012, it just, it was three years later. Frankly, I'd been sitting on it for three years, right? And that's what a lot of people do. And then one, uh, I don't know where I was, but I, I remember I was single at the time and it was spring and it was really nice outside because <laughs> I wanted to go out and play and go out with my girlfriends. And instead I sat in for two weekends in a row for the full two weekends in a row and wrote the entire book in four days. Love so yourself days. successful. Yes. But it downloaded. That's when it downloaded. You just have to take it and go, you know. All right. I, 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 hear, I heard what you said and I'm following you, but I still want to know what was the impetus for that book? What was the love yourself successful? <sighs> is a great title yes and there's another question i have down the road but what brought that title to you and what's in that book that all of us have to rush out and get right on so, yes so the title came my my publisher because i hired i hired a publisher to to do that because i didn't know about all the logistics of how to get the book done yeah. and it was just easier to hire someone she told me go to the bookstores and look at the bookshelves at the other books and the titles and and see if you can get any kind of inspiration for the title 
And I was looking and looking in the business and the love and the inspirational self-love and all these kinds of different sections. And then I saw Michael Port's book, Book Yourself Solid. I saw his book, Book Yourself Solid. And I thought, love yourself successful. And it just came to me in the bookstore. And I'm like, boop, that's the title. And then I went home and made sure it wasn't trademarked or anything like that because you got to do that. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's how I got the well, title. Well, listen, you, you, it was uh, a, mo a moment where you had a, an inspirational thought. Yeah. And you embraced it. It came it to you because it was just sitting there waiting to arrive. Yeah. If you listen to your own intuition and these, and you sit, it happens. It just, it happens. And, uh, so the book is is really about the four types of love that I talk about that if you don't focus on in your personal life, that you it'll be really hard to make a lot of money in your business. So I correlate it with business and being an entrepreneur and how you need to stop settling in your personal life uh, with crappy people, um, people who aren't supportive, with toxic people, with um, lots of different things, with your own self head trash. <clears throat> and uh, I... I like yeah. the crappy people. No, we don't want the crappy people around us. We, people, we want to get people who embrace and support and help us to rise. Listen, you have such a great story and I love the story and how you share it with us about how you came to the book because I just think the title is beyond. But I'm going to ask you now to just take a quick seat in the green room and I'm going to take a quick intermission and I'll be back with you in just a second. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. <gasps> Don't you love it? It's just so exciting. I mean, for me, I hope it is for you. I'm sure it is. And for those of you who come for the replay, welcome. And thanks for being here. The whole intention is that you will connect and unite with Katrina because this leading ladies, leaving legacies is all about connecting one lady with another. And we get a circle and a group of women who are all supportive of one another. I'm also inviting you to join my Facebook group, Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. We have lots of fun there and there's a lot of good stuff in the hopper. I've been saying this for quite a while, but it's about to materialize here. So keep the faith and hold on. And there's a lot of good things that we're all about. I want you to know that if you are a woman in her second act, regardless of age, and you are struggling with styling yourself and you're spending way too much money, then we need to align and connect together because I want to help you to avoid that trauma because it can get to be very, very trying in so many deadly ways. Leading ladies who come here to share their journeys with you, it's for you to connect with them because all of them come with a different story, a different journey, but parts of all of us are within that journey. So just get to my Facebook group, the business page and connect with me in the leading ladies leading legacies and maybe you would like to be a guest here on the show we have fun don't we katrina we always have fun <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway, let me ask you this what is it now that you're doing what's next on your horizon what's on the agenda that's coming up you mentioned that you're writing another book i think yeah so the next compilation book with 15 authors is publishing on october 6th so mm -hmm. we're looking for people to buy the book on that day so we can all become international bestsellers. <laughs> and then uh, I host a live event every November called Jumpstart Your Biz in a Weekend. And that is happening now virtually, which I'm excited about because I've got a whole bunch of ideas from all the virtual events I've attended on how to make this an amazing experience for people. Wonderful. Tell me, you do so much, and that's good because I think I every now and then I meet a woman like you, a lady, and I just give her the label, a Renaissance woman. We know what that <laughs> is, and I see you in that light. So tell us, what is it that you enjoy most of all and all the wonderful things that you do? And don't tell me everything. Don't tell me everything. There's usually one to three things out of all the things that one does that gives them more pleasure and they get more impact and success and love from the people that they're working with. So share with us that if you can, of course you can. Yeah, sure. Well, I love it when I get on a call with a client who I've been working with uh, and she just landed a new client at the new rate or the very high price program that we just created. Yeah. And she is bouncing off the wall because she never thought she could charge that or make that or someone would pay her that. And she had the courage to speak it. I always say, people ask me how much to charge. I said, as much as you could possibly say without stuttering. <laughs> and then <laughs> when you stutter, you lose the sale. So don't say a, a number you can't say without stuttering. 
And when I see their, their eyes just light up, even if it's, they raise their price from 150 to 200 an hour or, but it, I love it when it's like, we've created a $4,000 program and they go and sell one and they're like, Oh my God. And then they see the future of what's possible. And that is what I love. That's why I do what I do. I hear you loud and clear. And of all the things that you do, what would you say is the strongest area or point that you have in doing it? What is it that you know that you're in your zone of genius and there are no equals there? There's no competition. There's no competition anyway. The only competition is with ourselves. But sure. what area would that be for you? It's really analyzing what someone needs to do. It's that it is that pure jumpstart of uh, looking at where they're at, where they want to be, and then being able to see their next couple steps. So the order of importance that they need to do things in or how they need to change or what to say, et cetera. It is that my genius is being able to tell people exactly what to do because there's too many options out there. And they get overwhelmed with them all and they think they have to do everything. And I'm like, no, you need to make $5,000. You have this program. You got to do it. This is what you do. Boom, boom, boom. Done. You know, that, that, that Katrina, that is a gift. That is a blessing. And that is something that's very, very special because there is so much out here. You you're bombarded every day with everything. All right. Now let's hop into style. How, what does style mean to you and how would you classify <laughs> your style? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my style has changed since COVID because my style is very different now. It's only from the waist up. So I've been talking a lot more and you probably have too with your stage, right? My stage yeah. is what you see us in a video screen. So mm -hmm. there's, I can't tell you how many people are not well staged and they just continue to do these calls. Or I have this one guy in my program who comes to the call every time in the same orange t-shirt and he's sitting on his bed with his laptop. And I'm like, dude, first of all, change your shirt. We remember you wearing that orange shirt the last couple of times we've seen you. And get off your bed, get some lighting on you um, and, stage yourself right so like uh, i have more books i'm gonna have to build some more shelves down here right now i wish i i don't know i have like two a foot behind me i don't have a lot of foot so, so everybody's different and don't use those virtual backgrounds please don't and so when i think of style i think of yes you need to have, be well put together accessories are great on video like a big bold you have a big bold statement necklace right that's awesome mm -hmm. um but your, your style needs to exude out into your little space. I you think. you are preaching to the choir and I love everything that you said and you're spot on. <laughs> what style, as far as a category, where do you put yourself? Romantic, classic, chic, mm -hmm. dramatic? Where, where do I'm, you I'm casual, casual and comfortable and, and <laughs> as dressed up as I can be as still being casual and comfortable. And I say that because I've had two total hip replacement surgeries in my life in the last eight years. And I've also had a foot surgery, so I can't wear heels anymore. So I'm very, I have, it's not as fun. Like I used to be like hot dresses, skinny with the heels and oh my God, I just, no thank you anymore. Thank, thank you I'm for 50. your, your <laughs> if, no, no, I, I, I heard you. And I love the way you express your style and what style is. That's really important because most of us are in this box and you use the word stage here. Yeah. And how you show up and present your presence, it still matters. And if you're a professional in leadership, you cannot poo poo and put it way on the back burn. Listen, my love, things go here. Time just flies here. I don't know where it goes into the stratosphere somewhere, but leave what, words of wisdom would you like to leave us with what point of information would you like to leave us with whatever that might be before you say so long for now thank you for being here it's been my honor and pleasure to spend this short time with you but we're going to spend a lot more time together that i know but what words do you want to leave us with here tonight well i would say life is short and you have to do it now whatever it is for you whether it's uh, leave your crappy marriage and find a better man or jump out of your uh, of your comfort level and start your own business or 
ask for a raise from your boss or fire your horrible client that treats you like, you know what, or whatever it is. Like there's no time but the present to do it now. And so just uh, find the courage, get the courage, get the support of people around you and life's too short. You gotta do it now. Now, now is the word you're leaving us with. And I like that. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Trina. You are special. I'm gonna put you in the green room, stay there for just a second and I'll be right with you. Thank you, you are a delight. Thank you. Hold on. Ah, don't you just love her? I mean, she's a bundle of energy. We've got so much going on. She's chuckling over there, but it's true. And for me and hopefully for you, because that's why we do this show so that you can align with the women who will offer you so much and give you so much. And Katrina would be one of them. Remember this when it comes to style, she mentioned something about a large choker necklace. If you're doing this online work virtual here in the box, just make sure you show up the way you want to, looking your best. Don't get caught up and go over to the dark side in the casual, like the guy she mentioned in the orange shirt, because that's just not good. And it doesn't show you in the best light. I don't care how brilliant you are and all the other variables that you can mention there. It's always good to be with you. We hope that you will connect with the women who come here. That is the whole intention so that you can, if you, if not for you, then you might know someone that can benefit from the services that they offer. In the meantime, we're still in this pandemic. So do everything they're telling us to do, wear that mask. God knows none of us are in love with it, even the pretty ones, but yet do it and stay safe, be well, and continue to do all the things that they're telling us. And join me next Tuesday night. I have a new show coming up. I'll tell you more about it. But again, next Wednesday night for another Leading Lady. I am Joy Ruffin, the creator of Leading Lady, your signature style specialist and professional speaker. Take care, have a great week, and enjoy the weekend. So long for now. Cheers.